afternoon, everybody. I'm Kath Smythe. I'm the horticulturist with the Calgary Horticultural Society. And with me today is my good friend, Tom Martin, and he is the head gardener in our garden that is run by volunteers. And he is here so that we can help answer garlic questions. And over the years, I think he's planted many a row of garlic, which is kind of really good of him because he can't plant it at home because his wife's allergic. Can you imagine being allergic to garlic? <laughs> Not onions, I might add. <laughs> oh, and she's allergic to onions as well. So I find that startling. But then again, I have a cousin who's allergic to black pepper. So should I be surprised? I don't think so. Anyway, we're here to try and answer questions that you may or may not have about garlic. And if there's none coming up right away, we're going to start with a few things that we over the years have decided are important about planting garlic because it's that time of year we're planting garlic. And I want Tom to show off. He created a garlic dibber because you're supposed to plant your garlic six inches deep and you should have a certain spacing. So Tom being the engineer that he is has created this creation. You want to show them Tom? Now, Oops. There, by the camera. <laughs> now it may look like we're putting a cross up, but he's done it really, really well. He's put a handle on the top even. And where you plant to is the top of this lower part. And you push it right in. And what's really good is that it also has the spacing. So you poke a hole, you've pushed it in, the mark is there. So you just go along and you poke the next hole. And you do a little turning, so that just in case, just in case the clove doesn't go right down. So he's he's created this so that we don't have to guess how deep six inches deep is, and then spacing the is that how many inches? Six, six. six inches apart. Because what we're trying to achieve is good sized garlic, and if you give them good room to grow in they get quite large. So I'm always very keen about looking at that. And I, you know, I, when I'm looking at garlic, I'm always looking at, oh, is this a good one I want to plant in my garden? And I'm looking and I'm going, ooh, this is a beauty because look at that nice. And you know, a lot of the growers will tell you that they're looking at how many cloves are within the bulb itself. And this particular variety is music, which is one of my older favorites. It's an oldie, just like all of them, but it's one of my favorites because there's so many cloves in this garlic and the hard neck is holding it together. So usually what I do is at this stage in the year, I try to make sure that the beard's a little bit off and I'm looking and I'm going, ooh, this is a good one. And so what I do is I hold it like this and I give it a good couple of taps and that loosens out the clothes so that you're getting it ready to go in. And then you give the neck a good solid turn. Now you see sometimes my trick works, sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> so I give it a good turn. And now what I've got is the bulbs are breaking. Look at the size of that clove. Can you see that? That's amazing. So I'm looking at these cloves and I'm pulling them off and I'm trying, I don't want to break the skin and I want the round bit to show. So I'm going to put it down on the table and we're going to change to the close up camera. So as you can see, I've got that nice, lovely, clean clove. I've got this giant clove and that's looking really, really good. And what I've got here is I'm trying to get them off the platform. See how where the root was? There's a platform there. I'm getting them off intact. So I've pulled them all apart. I haven't broken the skin and I'm still going. And look at how nice and solid that platform is. So that means that we've got good contact. It's really hard still there, but these bulbs are ready to go in the ground. And I make sure that the, some of the pearly part of the shell is off, but you want to plant them pointed side up. And I'm sure that most people know that, but it's interesting to me out of that bulb, I thought I had six cloves, but I only had Five. So I'm going, ooh, that's interesting. Because on Thursday, 
On Thursday, I broke the same variety apart and I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cloves. So planting and, and looking at varietals is really important. So just something to keep in mind when you're planting them and remember, pointed side up. Anyway. I see we have a question. Will having garlic next to the tomatoes affect the taste? Not really. I, I have only found that there's a certain amount of, um, I'm trying to think of the name of the chemical and it won't tell me what it releases. But the thing about the garlic is that it will affect how the tomatoes are produced because when it starts to produce the flower in July, it will start to produce a really nice, pollen that when it goes to pollen, the bees go by, they'll pollinate, they'll go through the garlic flower and then they'll come over and they'll go through the tomatoes and pollinate them. What's your experience, Don? Uh, same as what you're just saying. Kathy. Yeah, I haven't really seen a lot of difference in the taste. I will say that garlic being in its for background is that they are part of the lily family and they have a very, very attractive sent to a bee or to a pollinator so they do help to pollinate tomatoes and that's one of the people reason people like to do that kind of pollination oh there's a new question tom are you going to end what variety is the garlic that we're showing right now you're showing tom? it's music it's probably one of the most reliable garlics for this area if you go to a lot of the market gardens, you'll find it's available for sale quite readily. Yeah, and they are. I actually, the market people that man, that were came to the park the other day, they had music and they had Red Russian, and they say those are the two most reliable that they have in their gardens. Tom, they're asking, how did Tom make the garlic dibber? <laughs> I see that. The, the garlic dibber is really quite simple. Yeah. It's uh, three different parts. I put a handle on it. It's not absolutely necessary to have that, but it makes it more convenient to use. This stem can be almost any length, as long as it's at least seven inches long. It's about an inch by an inch. This bar sticks six inches out beyond on each side, and it's about an inch thick. And it's just really scrap lumber is all it is. Is it nailed or screwed together? It's screwed and glued. Oh, that's Tom. But <laughs> you see, what I like about it is it's just the right size for the garlic. It's not too big and it's not too small. And even with the giant piece of garlic, it will make a big enough hole for it to go in. So that's what I kind of like and, about all of these. You want to make sure you've got six inches from the top of this bar to the bottom of the stem because you want to plant your garlic six inches deep. But what you're going to do is drive it down in the dirt, including this space bar. You want it to go in the dirt. And what that does is leave a reference mark in the soil. So when you move to plant your next one, you're just going to drive down where that reference mark was. So you can space it as you go. There's no measuring involved. Uh, and then you can turn it this way if you want to start a new row. Um, again, you're six inches away. And we kind of uh, fiddled with this because it uh, spent the whole process of garlic planting up. We did it with trowels initially, and uh, it was just a pain. It was too <laughs> slow. Tom's all if about you're doing the efficiencies. Any, I'm an efficiency bug. If there's a better way to do it, I'll figure it out. As a result, in our cupboard, we have several things for square foot gardening, and we have givers <clears throat> now. Okay. <clears throat> Thanks to show us how deep we should plant the garlic, but what about the spacing between each clove? Tom re-explain. <clears throat> Six inches clove to clove. Yes. So again, this is uh, six inches, six inches from here to here. So you're gonna plant the first one where the stem is. This is gonna leave a reference mark in the soil and you're just gonna move the dipper over 
to the point of the reference mark and there's your six inches. And you can just go right along the line. And what we actually have done is we make all the holes and then we plant. We don't do them one at a time. And they plant 10 feet by 10 feet. And this year we planted four varieties? Uh, or I think five. 10. Oh, we planted 10 uh, varieties. I take that back. Okay. All right. Now the next question is, why do you plant garlic six inches apart? Tom? I don't know that I have a good answer for that. Um, that is kind of a standard that I've read about in many websites. So we just kind of uh, adapted that standard. And I, I also can contribute to that from talking to the local growers within Alberta because there has become quite an industry of garlic planting. Six inches gives you bigger bulbs and gives you more room to grow. And in, if you were to look at the roots and how much room they need and how far down they go, that's important, that's crucial because they need moisture when they're developing. So the roots are important and it gives it lots of room to gather moisture there. So that's why you go six inches apart. <clears throat> okay, do you compost your soil before planting? Do you water after planting? How deep do you mulch after planting? Do you, we use uh, our compost. We, we just put the compost in our garlic bed last week. We've incorporated it quite well. We're allowing it to have about a three week period to mellow out a little bit and breathe good. Unless the soil is exceptionally dry, which it isn't, um, we would probably put a little water in, but not a whole lot, because you really don't want to initiate growth yeah. at this time of year. You want them to stay dormant. As far as mulching goes, we do mulch quite deeply. We probably put about a good six to eight inches of leaves over top of the garlic. Not, not barlic, not bark mulch. You really don't want to put bark mulch on. You want to use the leaves. Yeah, we it. just use dry leaves. And then we normally cover that with a plastic sheet to keep snow from uh, melting in a Chinook and draining down into the bed, maybe causing a problem. And you use black sheeting. You use the black plastic we, we've sheeting. We've used yes. yeah. both clear and oh, black. Oh, actually. I thought you just, for some reason, uh, I thought you were using oh, black sheeting. we've used both. Well, I think both ways is good because you don't want the frost to come out of the <coughs> ground because once these guys are triggered, because they only really want five to six weeks of cold, cold, <coughs> which we get November, December, January, but what we want is for them to hold on till we get warm enough weather for them to do to put their tops up. So that's usually April 15th or so they start to peek out of our bed. Right, yeah. Let me tell you what we did differently this year to speed up cleanup in the spring. We actually didn't take the leaves out of the bags. We oh, just right. we just took the bags and we kind of compressed them. So they were nice and flat and even, and then we just laid the bags over the bed. Yes. Come spring, all we got to do is pick the bags up and away we go. The risk when you put the leaves down directly, and it's not a big risk, is if you try to rake up the leaves and the garlic is slightly sprouted, you could break the tips off the garlic. Yeah. And so that it is just sped things up for us. Well, that, that is probably one of the things that I liked. We got a, somebody brought us some bags of leaves and it was perfect. It worked really, really well. I, I, oh, he, he brought them. I thought it was just an anonymous donor. Because no. every once in a while stuff appears in our garden, which kind of goes, oh, that's interesting. And then Tom and the gang find the most amazing uses for stuff. All right. Can you repeat the names of the garlic that grow best in Calgary? Well, I'm, I'm a fan of music, as you can see, but we've had a lot of success with the Russian, Russian red one, which a lot of the local growers around have done that. And then there's a group of garlic called Purple Stripe, and there's some really good ones off that one. Belarus is one, but it produces early garlic. And then there's the Glazed Purple Stripe, which is a mid-season garlic, which usually shows up probably the middle of July, the end of July. And then there's the Rocambles, which are a really, really good one. They have some great 
flavor in them. And the rocambles are named because they're squishy. They're kind of short and stubby and round. And they are really, really good. And I personally, I've always liked some of the rocambles. I, I look at them and I go, oh, Russian red. And that's the one that the garlic growers are really turning themselves towards. So do look for something like that. And there's music, of course, is really good. And it's part of the porcelain group. And the porcelains are really big and they get the big scape on them. And the scape is that curly thing. Oh, which variety is that? Tibetan. Oh, this is Tibetan. Now, I, I read about this one. It is amazing. <laughs> Tibetan is very, very hot. When you start to become an aficionado of this hardneck garlic or garlic in general, there are some amazing flavors to them. So if you ever get a chance to just go to somewhere and have roasted garlic and get them to roast a specific kind, this guy, if you like hot, this one is very flat, very, very pretty, but very hot. So that's another variety that's really well. Um, but those are just a few, and there's a lot of them. The vendors out there on our list have some amazing varieties that they're growing and they're becoming more and more adept at picking varieties that grow very well. Can you grow something else between the garlic plants? No. You want as much nutrition from the soil to go in as possible. However, saying that, some of my friends here again, besides growing the tomatoes in with the tomatoes, they grow their garlic in between their roses. And the reason they do that is for the pollinators because they do attract the pollinators. And it is a lot to do with the chemical that the root itself releases to enrich the soil. So I would personally plant them in, but I, I unfortunately garlic appeals to my inner Libra. I like everything symmetrical. So I love gardens with straight rows. So garlic, if you grow it in a straight row, just appeals to me. But you can plant it so that it, you can put other things, but you don't want anything competing with the moisture for them. Right? <laughs> All right. All right. Can I plant garlic I buy from the grocery stores? Um, well, garlic that you get from the grocery store has been preserved. 95 to 98 percent of it is not locally grown garlic it's from china it's a soft garlic and it is a mid-season producer in our part of the world but it also doesn't survive in the ground over our winters so it's one of those ones you plant in the spring which if you were to go to the uh, garden centers they sell a soft neck garlic in the springtime that does quite well here but it produces at a funny rate and it isn't as reliable and it doesn't seem to do as well as these hard necks. Although there are a few ones that are um, uh, available that are from that same region. There's one called from Kazakhstan, which is really, really good, but it's very lively flavor. I, I went to a local supper and they were serving it baked and oh my gosh, but it was really good with the beer. Just saying. <laughs> All right. Should I treat them the same way as hard neck garlic? No. As I said, you've got to plant them in the springtime. What kind what kind of leaves work better, Tom? <laughs> well, we have green ash leaves available. I'm not sure they're better, but uh, I think birch, uh, hawthorn, ash, uh, Oak leaves, if you have them available, if you've got one of those oak trees that grows here, those types of leaves are ideal because when you're done with them, they compost very well. You can just toss them in your compost bin. But why don't you want poplar? They don't compost so well. Yeah, they stay whole. I, I always feel like I'm on an expedition in my compost bin because I find whole layers. So now I shred them before I put them in. And uh, even then, they don't break down quickly. I'm sure you could use compost because really all your or use uh, poplar leaves because all you're really trying to do is insulate the system with a good six to eight inches of insulation on top of the soil. So virtually anything you could probably use sawdust. I wouldn't recommend it, but you probably could. Yes, but don't pressure treat it. Would you don't use that sauce? Oh. No, because it's really, it's got copper in it, so you don't want to do that. 
can I plant the cloves that have sprouted? <sighs> yes, but you're going to have to get them down at least six inches deep. And so it's going to take a while for the leaves to come up, which is going to be part and parcel of it. But by planting the ones that have sprouted, you might get a little bit of rot over the winter, but they will grow and they will work. But it's just making sure that you get them well insulated. And it, when they come up in the spring, they'll probably be the first ones that come up. So you'll have to watch very carefully when they come up. Okay. Oh, what time period should you plant your garlic? Well, we're waiting for next We're waiting spring. for colder weather, actually. Yes. That's sad to say. Uh, we usually like to plant maybe a week before things are starting to get pretty frosty. Yeah. And, and it's a full moon on October 1st. And October 1st is the October 1st moon is a hunter moon, it's called. But usually about this time of year with that full moon, you start to see a ring around the moon. And as my grandpa and my mom always said, full moon, ring around the moon, it means harvest or harvest soon or frost soon. Uh, one of the garlic uh, growers is looking for volunteers for planting. And I think he's looking for people between the 6th and the 10th of October. Yes. Is his rough time period. So. So I would sort of watch the weather, look on the long range forecast, but it's going to be 20 below next Monday, get out of today. Yeah, get out and start but, planting. Uh, you Don't kind of just want to watch the weather. Yeah, okay. Do you wait for the ground to freeze before the bed, before insulating the bed? We typically insulate almost immediately within a week after planting, we're insulating. Yes, it's really important to get it on soon so that the moisture stays in place and you're not watering it all the time. Because the last thing you want is once you get them initially watered in and you insulate them, that helps to hold the moisture and it should be fine. Okay, what are some kind of fertilizers that you can use or I can use? Um, compost. Fresh is, is the best choice. <laughs> compost is the best choice and no kidding it is. I actually in the springtime or somewhere in there I will go to one of the smaller garden centers and some of the big ones as well and I will buy worm castings and I will in the springtime after I take the mulch off and I've been watching them starting to come up I'll trowel in a bit of worm castings and that's about it. That's pretty much all I do. Any more time? Here's a question coming up. Oh, it really needs a good answer. <laughs> How do I plant garlic in a raised bed? Tom can answer uh, this because we've done it. Let me tell you our first two years of experience at a raised bed. I'm talking about a bed that's about probably 30 inches above the ground, so quite high. And it's about 12 feet long, three feet wide. And I think we put five or six rows of garlic in. And we had significant failure, particularly with the two outside rows. And I think the problem in the raised bed is this. Not only does the frost come down from above, but it comes in from the sides. And I think literally you're killing the bulbs. So if you're going to plant and raise bed, I would suggest you leave a foot of soil before yes. you plant your first row yeah. all the way around. Yeah. Now, if it's a low bed, and we're planting in a bed right now that's raised about six inches, but because we're planting with a six inch nibble, we're really at original ground level outside the box. So we're not getting that side penetration of frost. We're getting down deeper since we moved our garlic uh, growing to a different bed, which we did two years ago. We've had great success. We had, well, you were there when we harvested cows. Yes. I think maybe there were two failed the bulbs. That was it, and that was amazing. Probably 200. Yeah. From the previous years when we used to do it in those big raised beds, I was always 
Oh my goodness, all those garlic in the outer edges. Yeah, we and, were, yeah. And, was it 30% at least? Yeah, so last year in my raised bed, I only went down the middle of it. My raised bed is easily 24 <laughs> inches above the ground, and I plant in a foot and go down the middle because my bed is four feet wide so I give a good foot on either side and I still get my six inches depth and I still get the spacing and I plant the entire 20 foot row bed and I do two rows but I cheat a bit because I start with one and then I zigzag so that I don't have and it, it worked like a darn my production this year was I was very impressed with myself because I'm a bad gardener I can tell you how to do it but I it's the hose that defeats me. <laughs> I'm not a good whole a hose hauler. So I, I guess it comes from all the years working in the greenhouses. Can you, uh, can I suggest some hot garlic? Well, if you can find some of the Asiatic lily, um, garlic, and I'm just hunting because I wrote them down. Someone told me which ones to look for. Um, Oh dear, where did I write it? Oh, here they are, the Asiatics. And the ones that you want to look for, one of them is called Tempest garlic. And it is also known as Ninja garlic. In fact, a friend of mine says, said, it's a very ancient Asiatic garlic. And a friend of mine said that she's quite certain that people discovered flame throwing, throwing dragons because of this Asiatic Tempest because it literally is so hot, you're going, whew. And, and it gives rival to habanero peppers. And then the other one that she suggested to try was Chinese purple. And that one too, we tried that one at one of the local suckers and <laughs> I can't eat habaneros and I definitely, I spent most of the night mopping the tears from the heat. So try a couple of those. And if you can't find that, there's a Spanish Roja. Roja, R-O-J-A, and it is another one that is thought of as very hot. So do look on some of the vendors' lists and see if you can find those ones. They're very, very good. Yeah, Tibetan kind of. Oh yeah, gets Tibetan. On the edge gets, of hot. Yes, it <laughs> definitely does, and it is an Asiatic or classified in there. So if you want to throw a bit of flame and then rival your habaneros, don't put them in the same dish together. Is my only suggestion, or warn your guests. <laughs> I have an above ground, but on ground boarded fence. Will that work? Sorry, I meant boards for the edging and holding in the soil, but it is on the ground. That'll work, won't it? Yeah, that'd be fine. That's kind of what we have out back on that one bed yeah. that we planted this year. Yeah, our bed is just made with uh, two by sixes, so we're only six inches above the ground, so. You're talking about essentially the same height above the ground, roughly. Six to eight inches shouldn't be a problem. Good. Yes, I actually, a few times, instead of planting in my raised bed, I've planted in my borders, and I've gone along, and my borders have rock along the edges just because I like the look of it, and I plant along that board and along that edge, and they've been fine. Okay. What is the process of growing from seed? Well, I just happen to have that. You know how in the springtime, the, the garlic produces that curled flower and it curls up quite tightly and it produces a flower, which by the way, you don't want to miss out on. And what it looks like is this purple. And this, once it hits this stage, these are delicious, but by now you've cut them off and they, they stay this purple and you saute them. And if you look closely, slowly but surely, they're turning white. And what I did this year, because I had talked to someone about this a little more, I let it sit in a vase in my kitchen and it gradually formed this fluffier head. Oh, look, I managed to shed some seed. But the seed comes out and it's pure white. The trick is, is to remember what variety you did this from. But usually you'll save the, I save some of these because I like to cook with the purple ones. I saute them. But the seed is this little fine white seed. And you can start growing garlic from seed in a nursery bed. And usually if you're going to plant, say, 30 seeds, you want a bed that's about 
10 feet by 10 feet or not even that 10 feet by four inches because you're going to plant each individual seed in that row i go along and i go down at least my knuckle and i just go along and i run the row and you plant them about two inches apart and you space them all along in there and they grow and they sprout up like an onion you leave them alone you let them do their thing all spring into summer and then they will have formed a bulb a small bulb, I grant you. But then you go to that next stage and you take a trowel and you lift out each one of these separately or you pull the whole roll up and then you just, you will have enough to plant and next year you will have cloves. You will have a garlic bulb. So what you will get is the full bulb. And a couple of the growers grow them on for two years after that and they get giant garlic. But I personally, I just prefer to start it from seed. And I'm hoping that I can convince Tom to give us a seed bed for just a bit of this seed. I can do that. Because uh, I'd really like to watch this happen a little more. I've done really well with it and managed to get 20 big cloves out of it <clears throat> last year. So I'd like to see it done. Doesn't that take two years to two get years. a mature bulb? Two years, seed? yes. But I'd like to experiment so that we can show people that it does form that small bulb. And Adam at uh, Parkland Peonies, who grows the amazing garlic, told me this is the best method is to space it two inches apart and then divide it in the fall and put it into a big bed and grow it. And he says he gets the, he's got these incredible red Russian garlics this year. So just thinking that way. Uh, let me ask you a question from that point of view. Once you're through the first year and you're going to move the bulb, how deep do you plant it? Then it should be big enough to go down six inches. Okay. And it's ready to go. Okay. What is the difference between culinary garlic and seed garlic? <laughs> Very little, actually. What a lot of the, the growers do, and I do it myself, is because I want to perpetuate the crop. <laughs> and because a lot of these heritage plants were meant to be gathered at the end of the year and then you select out one or two or three big bulbs and you use those ones to grow from or you wait for them to flower and grow them from seed. But culinary garlic and seed garlic are virtually the same crop, it's just that you select some out to grow as seed garlic. How do I best preserve my garlic? Well, we hang our garlic to dry. But if I'm going to preserve it and use it for culinary, I clean all of these roots. If I can, I don't cut them completely off because you want to leave, you want to leave the basal plate in place. You truly, truly do. You want to um, go to the point of harvesting and leaving this part of it intact. So when you put your garlic into the kitchen cupboard, you're gonna have the bulb sitting grow there in your garlic storage and you want to leave a bit of the neck on so that they will linger and last. I've had some of my garlic, in fact I used the last of my garlic from the previous year, I just used it at the end of May. So it dries quite nicely. You do not want to put it into the refrigerator, it doesn't do well in there. You want to keep it in a fairly dark place. And if you can, as the skin starts to dry, you try to get down to the clean skin so that you're not storing all the soil from the garden. And then I just take a pair of scissors and cut the beard off so it doesn't hold and trap any creatures. But that's the best way is cool and dark and keep about that much stem on them and they'll be fine. Or if you want, you can keep them a bit longer and tie a string and keep them in a dark, cool cupboard and they will keep just fine. All right, so the next part of this whole process is cooking with garlic is probably my next favorite thing. And as I come up into this part of the year, I'm starting to think already what I'm going to harvest, what ones I'm going to use. And I really do have to, I go through these bundles and I'm looking to clean them off to make sure that they, they're clean and there's no disease in them. Like when I scrape on this one, I've discovered there's a scar in the bulb. So I will, that one will probably just get cut up and used in the cooking. It won't go in the ground. I will also have a little discussion with myself 
about what I'm going to use and what I'm going to keep. Oh, can I plant my garlic in the same bed year after year? Yes, you can, but you've got to put in the good compost. And like Tom was saying, they've composted the bed already, right? Yep. And you're, but you're using the same bed essentially. This will be the third year yes. coming up. Yeah, and and that you can't fault the crop. The only thing I don't like is rotating root crops through the same spaces. So, for instance, if it one year I grew onions in that bed, and the rotation is to move something in there, I wouldn't go onions then garlic. I would go onions then peas, etc. So that you're growing a different, like a leaf crop or a uh, pea crop because of the legumes. But really and truly, if you freshen that compost and put good compost in it two to three weeks before planting, getting it to mellow in, it should be fine. And there's no reason why you don't move it around. What are your thoughts of adding ash from your fire pit on top of the soil after you have planted the garlic? No, don't do that. You never really know what the, tr what the log will burn like, what will be in that log. And you do run the risk of the, what is it that's released in the fire? in the log, I cannot remember, but you don't want to do that. Isn't, yeah, isn't that you. your experience? I've, I, I find that sometimes <clears throat> by using wood ash, it's all very well to use it in places to deter weeds and things, but wood ash can be aliopathic, which means it won't allow anything to grow. So you have to be very careful of it and depend on what you get sometimes. Oh, one of my favorites. What kind of pests can attract, attack garlic? Well, you're lucky. The mice don't like them. The voles don't like the taste of them, so they will dig them. The only thing that, um, if you don't mulch them well enough, and the squirrels have watched you, the squirrels will go after them. However, this past couple of years, I have heard that people are getting that little tiny maggot in the, in the garlic. Haven't experienced it, but I have heard that it is part of the small fly. It's a small fly that lays its eggs in it, and it will attack the garlic. But if you keep, if you keep on top of it, and I use, I use a lot of diatomaceous earth. I collect that in eggshells, and I'll sprinkle a bit around, especially if I've had that problem before. If I plant a bed and I find that it's prevailing, I will give that plant a bed a dormant time, or I will put a cover crop on it like the winter peas or the fall rye and just leave it for a year to see if I can prevent that. And you have to do have to remember that being part of the lily family, they can be subject to some of the pests that attack lily. However, because it's part of the lily family, you think, that perhaps the lily beetle will go after it. Well, the lily beetle doesn't like this particular root, but if they get in, they will lay their eggs inside it. But you mulched it and covered it so well, and it's past the time when they've been out flying and eating the leaves on your on your lilies, so you won't have that problem. And so that's the only ones that I've heard of. All right. Oh. Can I plant garlic where I had a spruce removed since, can I use the decaying spruce needles for mulch? Mm. <sighs> I don't know how to answer that. <laughs> well, the first thing you've got to do where the spruce has been removed is make sure you're adding good compost and gradually building up the, the soil around it because where a spruce lives, the spruce has created its own personal environment. And it isn't necessarily that it alters the pH of the soil. What it's doing is essentially keeping the moisture there to water and keep the tree healthy. So you're you're finding that they will they'll they'll probably grow if they're getting lots of sun. But the thing is, the spruce needles you don't want to put that on there. The spruce puts down all those needles to conserve the moisture for the spruce. <clears throat> but it won't allow very much moisture. Once it's, it won't allow much moisture to penetrate. So I, I don't think I'd use the spruce needles in the first couple of years after the tree has come down. But I do like spruce needles for mulch. I think it's time. Um, well, that was a lot of lovely, lovely questions and I've really, really enjoyed. Oh, we're not, we're not done. Oh, I get to talk more. Oh, okay, I'm just going to keep talking, man. I wanted to talk about 
once you get your garlic up and growing and it's growing beautifully and you start to hit mid July and then all of a sudden those flowers appear and they curl and they curl into each other. And those are called the scapes and that's part of the natural cycle of it. And they usually from planting in the fall in when we plant them in October to July is usually about where the mid seasons start to produce these. And we will notice them starting to grow. And what you want them to do is you want to cut the scapes off and you want to get them while they're still flowering and haven't formed these really hard heads. And while they're still flowering and when they're that like that, you make yourself some pasta with some garlic scapes in it. It's very tasty. You preserve them. You can make a garlic paste from them. You can make a pesto. They're very, very tasty. But we discovered that some of the mid-seasons produce mid-July, and we had some in the back that didn't produce their scapes until quite late. Quite late. Quite late. And that was, I think that was the Tibetan. It could have been. I can't. I totally I, recall which for avian was. I think it was the Tibetan that produced late because they are a late producer. But you want to get those scapes off so that these bulbs will con and mature and start to firm up and become put on their extra skin so that when you pull them, they're ready to go. But the scape is an important part of it. And by getting the flowers off, then you get more. But if you do want to leave some of them to mature like this, these little purple things are delicious so you might want to look at that and really and truly it just depends and then there's a question here do I have to remove those scapes no if you want to leave them on and harvest as they produce this or if you're growing them into um, get some seed there's no reason why you can't do that either and it is very, very tasty from that standpoint. So you can do from two-way crop. Your bulb might be a little bit smaller, but it'll still have produced cloves and it still will grow on for the next year or for heart, for eating in your kitchen. Delicious. So you don't have to remove them. Can I plant garlic in the spring? Yes, you can. There are some, some varieties that are available for springtime planting. In particular, you will find at the garden center elephant garlic. And here's where these are ones that you can plant around in among your roses because they don't need to be in a straight row, but they need a good six inches and you need to get down six inches. Just don't forget that you planted them there and go to try and plant something else there. Have you ever planted elephant garlic? Haven't. Haven't. Well, I tried it a couple of times <coughs> and I thought to myself, oh, there's nothing here in one fall. I went, oh, I forgot I planted garlic. And it had finally come up above the ground at, I think I planted it the first week in May just to see what it would do. And it came up and it was looking lovely and green and it kind of looked pretty in among my roses. And I forgot about it and it was starting to go brown a bit. And then the scape came up and I picked one. And I have to tell you, this was back before I really was educated about hard neck garlic. And I was just surprised as heck. I smelled it and I went, ooh, garlic. So I tried it in the pasta that night. My husband was very impressed that I found something like that. Anyway, when I went to harvest it, the garlic bulb, it showed in the picture they were going to be big. Well, they were as big as my hand when I turfed them out. And I went, wow. So, and they mm. stored quite well. They stored right into mm. January. So How's the flavor of oats? They're yeah. not as strong. They're yeah. not as strong. They're But they're very nice. And those cloves if you think that's a big clove well these garlic the elephant garlic ones were huge and i only used one clove just to see what it was like and it was a nice garlic flavor and it gave this taste to it as spring planted garlic the types cats just described might be ideal if you've got a raised bed yes because you can plant into it after the ground totally thaws out you don't yeah. have that frost risk and if you've got a garden, if you're gardening on a patio or if you're gardening only on a porch, you can put them in pots and grow them. I haven't completely experimented with that, but one of my nieces did and she was tickled with it. She put it in a pot, a couple of the cloves around with her other potted plants and she was quite tickled with it. But as she said, the following year she found a bigger pot because the elephant garlic, she only put them in six inch clay pots and they grew as big as the six inch and she could hardly get the soil out. So something to think about. 
All right. Um, can I plant garlic if it has snow? We have an experience. <laughs> yes. <laughs> just of about that exact type. <laughs> yes. Only it was beyond snowed. Yes. For and I can't remember what the reason it was. I think we had a fierce snowstorm uh, sometime in. Uh, Wasn't fairly that the late September? September. Yeah, that was that snowtember. Not only had it snowed, but about the top inch of the soil had frozen solid. So we were literally out there chipping <laughs> the top inch of yeah. the soil off <laughs> yes, to I get that into the thought out. So snow plant, we had a pretty good crop. So yes, you can. Sure you can. You just have to be driven. <laughs> you have to be willing to pound it. Didn't you guys get out the... The, I forget the single dandelion weeders or something. Well, start they chopping. Were chipping like you wouldn't believe. Yeah, that. I know it was quite something. But yes, you can plant if it's snowed, but you got to get in there before it freezes down six inches, and then you're done. I um, honestly and truly, as I grow garlic, I become more and more enamored of it. I have to say that one of the things that really intrigues me about this is when we as the Horticultural Society took over the Hard Knit Garlic Project from McClure, McClure United Church. You'd think I could say that as Mr. McClure was one of my grandpa's cousins, so I should know the name. Anyway, um, McClure United handed off the project because it was becoming bigger and bigger. And agriculturally speaking in Alberta, the farmers and a lot of the people in Saskatchewan as the research that's being done at the University of Saskatoon or Saskatchewan, they are discovering more and more agricultural value to this. And when I look at what garlic is as a crop that's considered, quote, cash, I think what a great way to go. And it is one of those crops that we can keep on trying and keep on growing and keep on experimenting with. I, you know, I could read when I look at my list of garlics and when I first started speaking to garlic and, and all the varieties, we essentially, we were talking about marbled, the purple stripes, and we were talking about the glazed purple stripes. And then we got into, we started to see more and more people bringing us porcelains. And these are all garlics that historically, when people came from the old country, they would bring their garlic with them because that was an important part of their culture and it, it um, really was important to them as far as the food that we eat and it was really important to them that they continued a tradition that they had done in their families. So when I read some of this, but truly hard neck garlic is considered one of those ideal crops for our climate because they need our cold weather to survive. And they really and truly are recommended for our harsh climates. I don't know. I've never been to the Ukraine, but I understand it's a pretty harsh winter climate. So I would be saying, I wouldn't be kidding when I say agriculturally, they are becoming more and more people are growing them as part of the resilience of our food sources. And they are a valuable attractant of pollinators. So for that reason and that reason alone, and, and I have to value Italian cooking for introducing me to garlic, but I have subsequently discovered that even cabbage rolls get garlic put in. And who no. knew? <laughs> who knew? I didn't know that. And I, I have talked about it and I have honestly wondered more and more about that. But one of the garlics that I haven't seen a lot of available is the ones that are called artichoke garlics. You know how artichokes grow and they have those those prongs around them? Well, apparently they grow like that and they're very, very interesting growing. But the one that is the most popular is one that if you can find it from some of the northern vendors, it's called Kettle River Giant. And it's really, really gives you two layers. Like when you see a garlic clove, and you're seeing this part of the garlic clove, these artichoke garlics grow two layers of cloves. And they're very, very nice. They're probably one of those ones. I know that Kettle River is in, um, I think it's an American one that I really like. And then some of the ones that have developed out of northern, <laughs> our northern clients and the um, native garlics, which people go out and forage for, which please leave some in place so that they can keep growing. Don't go out and forage the whole crop, 
leave some to regrow because it's really important that we do that. But there's one that's called silver skin and one it, it's, it's really, really, it's out of Prince Edward Island and it's called Eureka Dana Reyes and it's developed out of Prince Edward Island and the silver skin is another lumpy garlic, but one of those ones that I really like, but I think I've talked about Asiatic lilies, uh, Asiatic uh, garlic, and I think, honest to goodness, the flavor of them just knocks me over every time I turn around, I go, whew. But a lot of people want to know if they will bolt. Now, bolting means that all of a sudden it will go into flower, and the flower seed will go really quickly, and it will go beyond where it's supposed to be. But sometimes those are the ones that you harvest almost immediately and they're earlier and they give you that fresh summer garlic flavor that you crave. And I like garlic from the standpoint of I like it dried. I discovered that my, my new stove has a dehydrator in it. So my experiment in the next two weeks is I'm going to dehydrate some garlic and see if I can make garlic powder. I don't want to make garlic salt because I don't want salt in it, but I want garlic powder. So I'm going to try doing that. Have you interested? Yeah. No. Well, so, as you know, there's no garlic in our house at all. Yeah. Sadly. So, yeah. And I just find that I want to so badly try some of these things. So I, when I found out that I had a dehydrator in my oven, in my stove, I was so excited. And my, my niece sort of went, oh, my goodness, Auntie Cap. This could turn into it because I went over to her house and I was digging around in her cupboard. And I, she says, what are you doing? I said, I'm looking for a tray with a raised little thing that I can put into my garlic, into my stove because I'm going to dry garlic. And she looks at me and she goes, why are we drying garlic now? Because <laughs> I have now so far dried zucchini to make it into thin strips to make uh, lasagna. I have dried eggplant because I've made a great masaka, by the way. Mm -hmm. And it's a good way to store things. So I'm playing. Anyway, Tom, what varieties of garlic are we planting <clears throat> at the uh, office? Of course, music. Yes. Uh, Tibetan. Yes. I have to look at the labels. I mean, we've got a bunch of the shed. Um, yes, we have more out in the shed, by the way. This the shed. is Persian Star. This one, I understand, it's got some spice to it. Yes, it does, according to my list. And this one uh, is... Oh, there's Persian Star. It doesn't have as dry, a dark a stripe to it. This is Georgian. Georgian. Oh, I read about this one, but look at that. Isn't that a gorgeous garlic? And here again, when you're going to put your garlic away before you store it in the cupboard, you want to clean as much off as you can. And I, I like to do it with my hands. I don't like to do it when I'm playing around. I just do this and I take a pair of scissors and I'm going to cut the head, the bottoms off of them. And when are we planting this? Probably a week to 10 days from now. Yes. And you guys possibly meet. longer. <laughs> and you guys meet on a Monday to plant. Tom and his gardening troop get in there and they do all this planting. It's always so interesting. But and actually, historically, we've invited people to come if they yeah. want to observe planting. I don't know if we can do that in the COVID no, era or not. I don't know. It's an outside thing, but if we get too many people, it'll be a little crowded, but yeah. it's management's decision, not ours. <laughs> and our garden isn't huge. But it's still a lovely teaching opportunity, and I wish that we could do what we want. Yeah. <laughs> okay, how much are we planning to grow for the next year? Probably we'll have 100 bulbs, is my okay. guess. Roughly. Okay, and you're going to split them, and we're going to put them, yeah. and we'll be... But how and many did we plant last year? About that. About that. Yeah. Because we didn't lose, we lost two, I think. Two. So yeah. we have 98 bulbs, so we're we're going to be good. We'll be just about yeah. right for doing it. I was going to ask you a question, Captain. Sure. You may or may not know the answer. It's going back to one of the questions we got online is, can you plant 
garlic over and over in the same location. Do you know what the commercial growers are doing? Do they rotate or not? Um, some of them rotate from field to field, but most of, most of the guys that I've talked to are using fresh compost into their garden. And in between the time that they harvest and they put in the next crop, they put a cover crop on. Okay. So that what will happen is that the cover crop will help to resuscitate the soil and there'll be a change in what the different bacteria is being introduced and that will be what they will do. But some of the larger guys will grow, well, a lot of the market gardener guys will just rotate their crops. You know, they'll yep. grow peas one year and then yep. they'll put in garlic the next year and they'll grow and that gives a stronger bulb. And another question that didn't come up, how thirsty is garlic when it's growing? It's it's moderately thirsty, but if you forget to water it, it won't produce. And if you, you dry it out, yeah. you're in trouble. Yeah, because you've learned that, right? Yes, don't let it dry out. Right, exactly. Don't drown it, but don't let it dry out. So, and so what would you steady, say? Steady level every of moisture, week. once every a week. week. Yeah, and the gardeners meet in the garden every Monday morning, and I know that they water unless we're having pouring rain, and I know that that's an important part of it. I just found the scissors on the floor. I'm just, Tom, can you? Without... Yeah. But you see what I mean when I talk about the fact that you want to take off the beard? It's just, just give them a, just a bit of a snip because we're trying to, just to keep them going and you want to keep that platform solid while you've got them in storage. Or then it also helps to when you're wanting to plant them. But I was interested when you said about the watering. I think uh, well, the thing to keep in mind is that bulb is six inches down. Yes. Which means the root is below that. Yes, exactly. To and you get can water see... is six inches down, you've got to put a considerable water on. Yes. So do you guys use hand watering or do you hand, do you put the soaker hose on it? We soaker hose it. Yeah. And that's the soaker hose. It's the hose that weeps water and you just turn it on and walk away for an hour and yep. let it walk, soak in. Yep. And that's really important right now. The soil is very, very dry, and I, our surface soil is drying out a little bit more, especially if it stays dry. I think I got three ro raindrops the day they predicted rain. Yeah. So there I am in the <clears throat> soaker hose. One thing I do in our garlic bed just about every week is I drive my finger down yes. to see where the moisture is. So that tells you the whole story. Yes, and that is true. So we really and truly it's making sure you're checking your water it isn't one of those crops that you have to baby baby but you do have to make sure that you're watching the rainfall and the moisture just to make sure but it doesn't need fertilizing really it's just compost or compost tea and you've got a crop that's easy to maintain and doesn't require your visitations all the time but the commercial guys tell me that as long as they keep good moisture on it and good mulch on it they even don't have to really spend a lot of time out watering it because it has so much going on with it. But I mean, if I were to sum up garlic, I would say it's a very rewarding crop. Wouldn't you, Tom? I love garlic. Yeah. Sadly, I never get to eat it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, you know how earlier I was talking about wanting to talk cooking with garlic and doing all of that? The Atco Blue Flame Kitchen will be here with us in another 20 minutes or so. And they are going to do cooking with garlic. I'm most excited to see how they're going to do the chocolate and garlic. It really intrigues me because last year at last year's garlic fair, they brought some to taste. And I am a chocolateaholic. Is that a right word? <laughs> I really enjoyed it. So I want to see how it's made. The other thing they're going to do is roast garlic with Chef Rick. And that should be neat. And we have lots more videos coming after that. So it should be very, very interesting for the rest of the day. I'm hoping now that we're going to take a short break. And we will see you at 1 o'clock with the At Cold Blue Flame Kitchen. Thank you for coming and talking to us. Thank you. Uh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Tom.